In this video, we will set up a crossover definition to create a free form tree canopy. We will use kangaroo goals to derive an optimum form. And we will set up the script such that it is parametrically scalable. This video is the first part of a parametric script which covers the generation of pavilion form and then rationalization of the form into strips for fabrication. We see a base mesh turning into a pavilion form then being divided into various strips which would appear something like this. into strips and rationalized as per length such that it can be used for fabrication with jointly details and the fabrication data extracted from this entire process would be flat 2D drawing with proper tags, cut lines and fold lines. You can access the tutorial along with the complete annotated script from our Patreon page. Link is in the description below. What you get access to is this entire script where we have annotation and broken the entire process into stepwise chunks. We also have description of how to read this entire script and the plugins required. Along with the script, we will also give you access to the plugins so that you are set up to create this entire script from start to end. With that in mind, let's get started with part A, which is to create the base mesh and apply kangaroo goals to derive this base mesh. We start by creating a rectangle. This project unit is set to millimeters. So we need to start with a rectangle of an approximate size of the pavilion. For now, I'm going to use 6 meters by 8 meters. So that's going to be 6,000 by 8,000. Once we have the rectangle, next step is to identify three points that can help us create a Voronoi out of this rectangle. So to get three points, I'm going to use Populate 2D. Populate 2D can be found under vector points, Populate 2D. It requires a region, which is this rectangle. It requires the count, so we need three points, that's three. And this parameter is going to serve as the, the number that is that can be used to change the number of three columns that we create out of this pavilion. So we're going to keep it at three at the moment and later on we'll see how we can keep increasing it parametrically and the form adjusts. And seed is a parameter to give you variations for the kinds of points that you want or where it's placed. So if I have a slider for 100, I can just select this, put this in over here and use a Voronoi. So with Voronoi, we need the points and we need the boundary. So here's the boundary. Once you have these three, you can see how changing 100 would change the shape of this. I'm going to keep it at any number that I like at the moment. I will keep it at 58. Once we have this, I'm now going to try create insets for all of these cells. To do that, I will firstly use Polygon Center. Polygon Center gives us three options. Either we can get the center using vertices, edges, or AS Android. I'm just going to use vertices. I'm going to use the center and I'm also going to use scale command. So here's the geometry. Here's the center and I'm going to use a factor of 0.5. That's fine. Now, once we have these two, we have to merge them together. Now, while merging, I need to ensure both these lists are crafted. And that's because we want the first polygline from each list and the, and the first polygon from the next one to be in the same branch. Same for the second one, same for the third one. So what I'm trying to do is currently each list has one, two, and three, and then one, two, three. That's one, two, three, and one, two, three. We're trying to pair this up together in one branch, this into one branch, and this into one branch. So after lofting the two, we get the output like this. Each branch has two inputs. Sorry, we are not lofting over here, we are uh, merging. So after merging this, we can use the loft command. Now it's lofted. Once this is lofted, we you notice how we have individual quads created. We use these quads and subdivide them further to, to get our individual mesh faces. To do that, 
we can use deconstruct data to get our individual faces and you'll see that each of these lofts have four five four so we've got five faces over here four faces over here and four surfaces over here we bring in divide domain square and this is standard rhino operations that someone might standard grasshopper operations that someone might learn when they start learning grasshopper so we take this surface we use a number that is going to help us control the number of divisions so i'm going to go with 16 and 10 and let's see what we get and we can adjust from here now this is just defining the segments or the domains to actually see this result on the geometry we need to bring in something called isotrim so here are the surfaces remember to graph this and then here are the domains and at this point let me just hide everything before this and we see the segmentation now these numbers control how many segmentations we want for each of these surfaces and these segmentations will affect the final outcome of the shape that we have so for now we're going to go with this number but later on if we want to make any adjustments to the shape or the form we can manipulate these numbers once we get these surfaces we need to convert them into a mesh so we can use simple mesh and with simple mesh you see that each of these surfaces have 160 uh, subdivided surfaces and each of them have been converted into a mesh and once we have this mesh we need to join them and build them so for that we can go to weaver board extract there's this component called join and join meshes and weld so we bring this together flatten over here and we ensure this is welded so set this to true and now that it's welded you can take a mesh component call it your base mesh now once we have our base mesh we need to set up kangaroo bolts while working with kangaroo the first thing i like to do is bring up the solver itself so here's the solver and it requires some goals. So we will set up a bunch of goals. And for that, I'm going to bring in something called end join. So whatever goals we bring up, each goal will occupy one of these branches and eventually comes over here. We'll also set up a button to reset. We'll also set up Boolean toggle. And finally, we want a way to visualize it. So explode tree and a mesh. This is a standard setup that is followed already. So I follow it when, whenever I set up a kangaroo, a kangaroo definition, which involves meshes. Okay. Now we need to add some goals in between. So the first goal that I want is to see the mesh once it's created. So for that, I'm just going to bring in a goal called show. So under main, you can bring in show. And whatever geometry we input over here is the geometry we see after the simulation. So we want to see the mesh. This goes in, this goes in over here. Right. That's the first goal. Now let's walk through step by step. How do we set up these goals? Okay. So the first thing we want to do is. Okay. So what are we trying to do with kangaroo? These external edges needs to move up and align to some curve form at the top. And the base is formed by these edges. So let's find a curve where the external edge can go and anchor itself. To create that curve, you can go back to the center points that we had, and I'm just going to create circles out of this. So we take the points and I use a radius. I'm going to use a radius of 5000 to create these three circles and you can play around with this radius. I'm going to use something called region union to join these three circles and get the union area, a single polyline. And then for the edges, I'm just going to use fillet. I'm just fillet this. I'm going to use a radius of 2000. Once we have this curve, you can use this curve as the anchor point. Once we have this curve, we also need to move this in the Z direction because right now it's on the XY plane. So we use a move command, Z vector, and I'm going to move it up by 4000. So that's the curve. Okay. Now we need to isolate the external edge over here. To isolate the external edge, we can use the mesh edges and that gives us naked edges and interior edges. Naked edges are these exposed edges, this or this one, these ones, and the interior edges are all of these internal ones. So I'm going to take the naked edges and I'm going to join them into using join curves. Once these are joined, a simple logic that you can apply is that the external edge would be the longest edge 
and the internal edges would be the shortest or shorter than the external one. So you can simply use lengths of the curve, which can be calculated using length command, and use the sort function to sort these curves. When I sort this, the last polyline over here in this list would be the external one. So I can use this item, use negative one to extract the last index, and that's the edge. I can explode these curves and let me just make some space over here and here's the curve and here are the vertices. Now just to ensure there are no duplicate vertices, I'm going to use remove duplicate points. Once I use remove duplicate points, I've got all unique points over here and this is the curve. So we can use a goal where we ask Kangaroo to take these points and place them on this curve. So let's find a relevant goal for that and that's under goal on, on curve. So it requires a set of points and a curve. So here we have the goal. So that's one. Let's see what happens when we use this. Now the first thing that we notice is that these points get anchored. Well, it's not really getting anchored when it gets placed on the curve, but everything else is somehow messed up. That's happening because we don't have any uh, spring force to act on the remaining mesh. So let's add a spring force by using the edge length goal. So here's the mesh. Edge length factor, I'm going to use 0.1. And apply it over here. Simulate. And what we notice is that all our points are getting placed on this curve, but then all our naked edges on the internal side are also aligning with this plane. So we want them to stick to the XY plane. For that, what we can do is uh, isolate those points first. So we had these list of uh, polyline curves, and the last one in this list of polyline curves was the external one. But the first three are the internal ones. So what we could do is use curl index, curl the last index, so I can use a negative one and wrap this through. So I get the last three. I use the same command to explode it and show that we don't have any duplicate points. I can flatten this as well. And once we know that there are no duplicate points, there's another goal called on plane. So we've got the points and the plane is X, Y. And we add this to the list of goals. And once we add this to the list of goals, let's see what happens. Right. So now the bottom curves are sticking to the XY plane, but the top ones are trying to place themselves on the curve that we've created. But as you can see, this somehow starts collapsing. Right. So one of the reasons why it's collapsing, let's see this again, is that all of these lines are trying to reduce in size. They're trying to pull inwards. So we need a resistive force to ensure or to tell these lines to stick to a particular length. So what we can do is take these segments and use something called equal length. So we're saying all of these length segments should try and remain of equal size. So here's the line and let's just use the force. Right. Now when we use this force, it's nice, it's not collapsing. So we have solved one problem and it's not collapsing to one side of this shape. But what we also notice is that these lines are not really anchoring or completely placed on the reference line that we've given. So to do that, let's just increase the strength of this force. So I'm going to increase the strength of this force to 100. And once I increase it, yeah, now it's placed well on that line. We can do another step to just manipulate this. For example, this bottom part is hanging quite low. So what we can do is introduce a load goal. So we introduce load. Load requires a bunch of points. So we can go back to the mesh, use naked vertices. So we take the mesh, we take all the clothed points and bring them up front. Use a force vector. Let's say we use a force of 10 in the Z direction. Add that to the just of goals that we have. And let's see how we can manipulate this. So if I keep moving this, that's how it gets manipulated.
You can change the maximum. And there we have it. So that's our form. Now to demonstrate how this is completely parametric, let me pull up this button all the way to the start of the script. And I'll also highlight the output, go back, right. So remember how we had three starting points? If I change that to four and press this button, now we have four outputs. If I do five and trigger this button again, now we have five. So based on the number of regions you create uh, using Warnoi and the points that you have and the curve that you have on the top, you can keep playing with this parameter and keep creating a vast network of these three columns uh, into a pavilion like that. That's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed this, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to see the entire tutorial, how we rationalize this into strips and create fabrication drawings out of this structure, I recommend subscribing to our Patreon channel where we have step-by-step -step guide on how to create uh, the strips, how to rationalize them, how to create jointly details. And an entire Grasshopper script is made available to you with proper annotation. And you can also reach out to me uh, as part of the Patreon community and I will help you out whenever you're stuck. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.